So hello everybody, I am Brandon Carroll uh, and I am on the technical evangelist team here at Riverbed. Um, we're going to do some demo and uh, look at some of the things that uh, Z talked about. Um, and then I want to show you a couple other things in Still Connect Manager that I think are pretty cool. Um, and while we do that, Tom will be sending you a message. I gave you all logins so you can log into my Still Connect Manager and poke around while I'm, I'm doing this. So if you want to take screenshots and stuff, just uh, I trust that you won't uh, burn down the house, right? Which house? <laughs> so let me, uh, let me show you, first of all, my Still Connect Manager here. Um, so my Still Connect Manager has several sites. I'm looking at the dashboard right now. All those green check marks are sites that are up. They have a gateway deployed in them. The green marks are tunnels. Uh, you see a little dot down near Los Angeles. Um, that is a site that's uh, under construction. I don't have a gateway deployed there yet, but I created a site. So we're just kind of waiting to get things done. Um, and I'm logged into my organization right now. I want to step back real quick and show you at a higher level, this is the uh, realm. So the realm has several orgs underneath it. The reason I want to show you this is because this is where we do things like the, the role-based access control, where I've given you all logins and then assigned you to have access to my org. Um, in fact, I think, um, I think, Nicholas, I didn't give you access to my org. So um, I'll just show you how easy it is to do that. Uh, I'm just going to assign a role to my org. And then I'll make you a network admin, submit it. And now you'll actually have, similar to the, what, what I have, if he logs in, he's got two orgs that he's got access to now. Uh, and up in the drop down, he'll be able to see the different orgs and access them. But he can log in and access multiple orgs. Reason I point this out is because I think it's an interesting use case that uh, you might want to have an organization for testing and development and then a production org and be able to take hardware, drop it from one org after you've tested it and move it to a production org and put it in production. So uh, with this, that's uh, definitely a capability. So uh, going back to uh, Still Connect Manager, actually, let me go back to my slide here and show you. This is sort of the high level of what the, the site looks like or what my sites look like. I have an Indianapolis gateway. It's an SDI 2030, something you'd put in a data center. It's got an MPLS connection and it's got a uh, internet connection. Now I've deployed several uh, gateways that are just internet only. So think I, I've gone through and I've set my branches up and uh, at this point uh, my branches are converted to to SD-WAN, but then I've got this MPLS cloud. Maybe I've got Orlando that I've just uh, upgraded a 570 uh, steelhead to steelhead uh, SD. I, I've added the WAN op to it, and it's in Orlando, and it's up and connected to MPLS, and it's online now. But then I've got this other site here with some prefixes that are uh, in a, a traditional router. That It's a site I haven't converted yet, and at some point we're going to need to talk. Right, so that's you mentioned. You mentioned WAN op, Brandon. So, so we need to be thinking. This isn't just about forwarding. This is also about you're applying WAN optimization as well. We can. So, in in my lab, I haven't enabled the WAN op. I'll show you where where you do it. Real simple to do. Uh, but this would this site here would have been a site that had a, a WAN op device that I've upgraded to the SD 2.0 or the, the steel at SD capability, adding the SD WAN and went up in the one box, yeah. Okay, so back in Still Connect Manager, I want to uh, finish up that site because I don't like seeing things unfinished. <coughs> so what I'm, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna add the gateway there, uh, but I'm gonna do it in a, a way that I think is pretty neat. So if I go into Appliances, and add an appliance. What I can add is uh, what we call a shadow appliance. Now, um, a shadow appliance lets me pick what kind of gateway I'm going to put into that site once I ship it there. And I'm going to put that in Menifee, and I'll submit that. 
and in the background, the automation takes over and attaches the uh, gateway to the uplinks that were created for the site. And of course, we're going to be slow. Live demos, right? This is what happens. And I might add that I've never had that many people logged into SCM at the same time. So if you're logged in and it keeps being slow, I might have you log out just to uh, take a little load off of my org. All right, so as I add this shadow appliance, it's going to attach to the uplinks. Uh, my uplinks that I've already put in here are static addressed. So when I plug the appliance in and I register it in with its uh, serial number, it's going to call home to uh, SCM. SCM is going to say, oh, I know who you are. And you're going to need to uh, be placed in the Menifee site. Here is your uplink, and here's your IP addresses, and it provisions all that for me. Let me just refresh and see what we get. Okay, we didn't put it in. So let me add that again real quick. So SDI 130 in Menifee, submit. Wait, that's not a... Yeah. Did we do it? Okay. All right, so now I have my shadow appliance. Um, if I look at my shadow appliance... Um, it, it's got all the constructs that I can go in and set up my BGP routing, my OSPF routing, all of that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go through all those details with you on this. Uh, but what I would do is go into my ports on this appliance, and I would tell it that my uh, WAM port is connected to the uplink, which it is because I already pre-configured that. And then I would just simply go back and register the appliance so I'm going to select Menifee. I'm going to go and register hardware. Make sure I'm on it. And then I got to grab my serial number. Drop my serial number in. And it'll register that appliance. And it'll take it from being a shadow appliance to an actual live appliance that's online. And then in just a few minutes, we'll see that go online. And then back in my dashboard, it's red right now because it's coming up, but I'll, it'll form all of its tunnels to all of my different sites and we'll be good to go. So while I let that run, um, and you can see it's coming up pretty quick there. While I let that run, uh, let's say now as I get my branches done, I want to add a little bit of uh, security to my sites, right? So uh, thinking firewall rules, right? Access control. So I can do that. I can come into my um, come into my rules, and then I have outbound slash internal rules. And from here, I can create policy, just like an access list. But it's it's even more than that because this this can be applied to uh, users, so it's identity based, uh, and it can also uh, look for applications. So it's application and user based control, right? Policy control. Now that's good, I could, I could add that security there, but also what I might want to do is uh, enhance security with like a next gen firewall. So if I wanted to do that, what I might do is integrate with Zscaler. So with Zscaler, we have the single click integration. We get our uh, partner key from the Zscaler cloud. We plug it into uh, Still Connect Manager so that they can uh, exchange the VPN credentials. Once I've done that, I pick the Zscaler cloud that I've been assigned. And now I pull in all of the Zen nodes that are part of that Zscaler cloud. And then in the background, what you don't see, and it, you might see some pop-ups here in a moment, is every single one of my sites now is finding the closest, the two closest Zen nodes, building VPN tunnels to them, and it's going to select the primary node as the one that's got the lowest latency. So we're tracking latency on those tunnels. We then uh, fail over if we need to. 
I need to reconnect this for something I'm going to show you here in just a second. But at this point, uh, that Z scaler, those tunnels are, are being built in the background. And uh, we've got our little pop-up messages on the bottom telling us that they're, they're coming online. So now if I go into a site and let's just take that Menifee site, for example, and I go to Zscaler, if I do that, maybe you can see it a little better. There's my two primary and secondary uh, Zens that I've built tunnels to from Menifee. And, and what's interesting is now I can say at an org level, when it comes to uh, internet breakout, my networking defaults are to take Zscaler as my primary internet breakout preference at all sites. I can go into each individual site and change this, but by default now, all my internet bound traffic is going to be heading out to Zscaler. Now, all of my site to site stuff, of course, we'll use our internet connections to build our uh, route VPN tunnels, and then I have my uh, MPLS cloud that I'm connected to, and I'll build tunnels over that MPLS cloud as well. So now what I might want to do is go back into my rules. And Roman touched on this. I can create my traffic path rules. And for example, I might say that my telephony traffic, which is what this first rule is all about, my telephony traffic voice, and I pick by application. So you've got some control there of what exactly is voice. Uh, and you can also create custom applications if, if you've got something that's and you want to have control over. Uh, but what I'm saying here is that for all of my uh, sources, all, all of my sites, all my users, uh, if you fall into these uh, application categories, so VoIP, for example, uh, I want to track my, uh, my latency-sensitive metrics, packet loss delay jitter on the tunnel on the internet and the tunnel on the MPLS. And I want to prefer my uh, internet tunnel over MPLS, but again, it, it's tracking metrics. And if the internet route VPN tunnel is degraded, then it's going to uh, move my traffic over to what, the What other. else, Brandon, uh, paid quality profile? What else can be? So, so now I have latency sensitive metrics, packet delay jitter. I have uh, interactive metrics, which is the packet delay, not the jitter. And then if I take that off, if I don't track my path quality profile, then as a path preference, uh, what I can do is I can just drop straight to the underlay and say, I want you to just take MPLS, but drop this traffic right on, on the underlay. Don't put it in one of our tunnels. And so I've got that option here. You can also kick traffic out to Zscaler if you want. Um, but again, that's how you control path mm -hmm. is within our traffic rules. So can you create your own profile, or can you just have your default profile in? Uh, manage all the thresholds that that you want. So right now we have uh, our defined profiles that are tracking those three values for for latency sensitive metrics, uh -huh. packet delay jitter. Uh, we don't have you don't have knobs right now to control those, but we're tracking those three values okay. and it, it's automatic for you. Yeah. So. Okay. So uh, next thing uh, to take a look at. Let's uh, jump over here to uh, a command line real quick. And um, so this is, this is my MPLS router. It's peered with the uh, router up here in Indianapolis, right? And if I do a show IP route, which then you can see I'm getting my BGP prefixes. This is strictly in the MPLS cloud. Uh, and then I'm getting some BGP prefixes here, the 10.88s, and those are coming from that Brownfield CE router. And you can see it's connected to those 10.88s, and it's advertising them via BGP, and they're coming over there, right? Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want to come into my org, and I want to define that, uh, that transit site. And I'm just going to give it a a tag so it can differentiate between the routes I'm going to bring in. I'm going to point to Indianapolis as my transit hub and I'll submit here. So cause a, a, a little reshuffle of uh, what's happening with the routing. And then what will happen is over here on my Brownfield router, if we watch, 
minute here. It'll now start to pull in all of the 172.16 prefixes from those internet only sites. It'll bring those in from Indianapolis and then drop those into the uh, MPLS network for me. And that's that use case that Z was talking about. And let me look and see if my PE router has it. it takes a minute to, to get those to come in. Okay, so now you're seeing them come in here. So there's my 172.16, one, two, three, it's all those sites that have come in. And that was it, just with that one little click and I, I brought all those routes that are internet only into the MPLS and made those reachable to my MPLS sites that are not converted to SD-WAN yet. Uh, two tunnel for the nearest these scalar nodes, right? Mm -hmm. So can we just uh, start the ping from one side to another side and can we fail the, one of the tunnels, primary tunnel, and can we see the packet lost if we will see the, uh, during the failover? We could. Um, my demo's not set up for that right now. But we could take that offline. Okay. Can I show you? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, the the last thing that I'll uh, I'll show you. Do I, have, I have a minute. Yeah. Okay. The last thing I'll show you is I took all of those routes that were internet only. I dropped them into MPLS. But if I were to go up and I were to look at my uh, overlay routes, and let's just say in Anchorage, I look at what I'm getting from Indianapolis. Uh, you, you want to see too, you're getting those 10.88 routes, right? So you got to get routes in both directions for full reachability, right? So uh, Z talked about having control when you start doing this. You may not want to have everything come in from your MPLS network and get spat out everywhere. Uh, so what we can do there is we can come into our sites and uh, I'll pick my Indianapolis site and my local subnet discovery. And what I can do is I can tell it what to include in those prefixes that it brings in. So I can say, I just want you to include uh, my MPLS, which would be everything. Or if I wanted to get more specific, I could come in and click on add network and I could say only bring in those 10.88 networks in which case then when I would go out to an internet only site I'm only going to see what's in the inclusion list so we got that two way